bow your heads with me. Good, gracious, merciful God, may we not forget that this earth is yours. Thank you for the gift of one another. Thank you for the gift of nature and for the gift of your spirit. May we be humbled in the understanding that you are greater than even our own ideas of what you might be. You are bigger than what we could ever comprehend. Thank you for your love. Amen.
Well, welcome, welcome, welcome to Wimberley United Methodist Church. It's so good to have all of you here. Uh, go ahead and please take a seat for a moment as we continue our time of worship. We just have a few things that we want to, to lift up. First off, if you would please take a moment and grab that Welcome to Wimberley card that came in your bulletin, flip it around and fill out the back for us. Um, this does a few things. One, it just helps us to take attendance, to see who's here so that we can check in on those who are not here. Uh, it helps to make sure that all of our contact information is correct. And finally, it helps us to celebrate and follow up with visitors. So please take a moment, fill this out, and then what we're going to ask you to do is to hold on to it until the time of offering, at which point you'll be invited to place it in the offering plate along with any gifts that you have this morning for worship. If you haven't yet had an opportunity to turn in your 2019 pledge card and you would like to do so, you can grab it from the pew back in front of you and place it in the offering plate as well. There's also a box in the narthex that you can slip those in if you would rather do that. Finally, if you have any prayer requests, please grab one of the green-headed prayer request cards that you'll find in the pew back in front of you. Fill it out and then give it to our ushers immediately following the Advent candle lighting and we will include your prayers and what we lift up corporately together. Children are absolutely welcome here in worship. We love having you. We want you to be able to engage in worship however best fits uh, your needs. And so with that in mind, we have a few ways that we want to invite you to be in worship with us. One is we have these red worship bags through these back double doors right here that have objects inside that correspond with different parts of our worship time. So these objects will help you understand what we're doing and help engage in that better if you would like. Or if you would rather, Miss Courtney is, after our children's time, um, going to invite any kids who want to to um, go with her to Kids Church in our fellowship hall for the remainder of our service. And so know that you have either of those options available to you, staying in here and engaging however you would like, or going with Miss Courtney to Kids Church. And uh, now with that in mind, Miss Courtney, I'm going to invite you to bring up all the kids. And what we're going to do is ask all the kids to stay here for the Advent candle lighting, and then any who want to go with Miss Courtney will be able to go with her. Hi, guys. Did everybody have a good Thanksgiving? Yes, awesome. Okay, so this can apply to everybody. Uh, raise your hand if you like opening presents. Well, only the kids, apparently. Okay, nobody else? All right, yeah, be honest. Yeah, it's good. Okay, so it's really fun right to open presents it's exciting I, that's the question Corinne what is in here that's what you always want to know what's in the par in the present what's in the box we're gonna find out maybe in a minute okay because part of it is that you don't really know what you're receiving right it's kind of awesome to wait right you kind of think about it mm -hmm, maybe do a little shake something like that, right? And it's the anticipation, it's that looking forward to the joy of what you're about to experience, okay, when you rip it open, right? Right this very second? Okay, you have to be patient. You have to wait a little bit. That's kind of what Advent is. Advent is waiting. Have anybody, have you guys heard that word before, Advent? Okay, we are starting the season of Advent here at church, okay? And Advent is the time of leading up to Christmas, okay? And it's the waiting, which is hard, right? It's preparing, it's getting ready. So have anybody put up Christmas decorations yet? Okay, great, yes, Pastor Wes? A little bit, right? That's part of the preparation, the preparing of it, okay? And it's the looking forward to, that's the anticipation, of what's about to happen okay so um every month i get a chance to tell you what our life application is um that we're going to be focusing on all month and this month it's joy yes you knew that because you were up in small group yep but it's not just the joy that comes from a new toy or going to a birthday party we talked about birthday parties or baseball game pastor west it's not just that joy it's a little bit more okay we're going to discover this month that God is the true, unending source of our joy, okay? Our circumstances, what's happening, happening in our life might not always make us feel happy, but we can have joy, like I've got that 
joy, 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 joy. Where? Down in my heart, right? It's not just because there's a present waiting for us, okay? It's because God is in control. Now, who wants to open the package? Not you? Sammy, do you want to open the package? Okay. Okay. All right. Rip it open there, Sammy. See what we got inside. I know. Everybody. <gasps> What's it going to be? What do you think? Uh huh. Yeah. So, what's in the box? Who's in the box? Jesus is in the box. Well, we don't really keep Jesus in the box, right? But it is. It's my bendable Jesus, right? It's like, hey, how's it going? Yep. This is Jesus, right? This is the toy that I use, and we play with it at Club 34 and things like that. But this is God's most precious gift to us, all right? And through Jesus, God made a way for us to have a relationship with him and being friends with Jesus can bring us a joy that won't go away no matter what's happening in our lives, okay? In Paul, Paul was one of Jesus's followers, okay? And in his letter, it's called the book of Philippians, okay? I'm going to read it to you right now. This is our memory verse for the month. And you guys remember my all the time challenge? If you guys can show me that you've memorized the verse, you get what? A surprise. Yeah. And it's a surprise because I won't know what it is until somebody tells me that they've memorized the verse. Okay, so this is um, chapter 4, verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. What word do you hear in rejoice? Joy. We hear joy in there, okay? We can have joy, okay, because God sent us Jesus. Now, will you guys pray with me? Will you repeat after me? Okay. Father God, thank you for Jesus, the source of our joy. Please draw us closer to you as we study your word and learn how to follow you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Wake up. The candle burns through the night, the comfort of the darkness broken by the harsh light, keeping us awake. We will rise, we will wake. Stay awake, do not sleep on this. Do not sleep on Christ's coming. Do not sleep on your preparation. Do not sleep on repentance, the turning and returning to God. We will prepare we will be wake. Do not sleep on the sun of humanity. Do not let the cock crow. Do not lie down. Get on your knees. Open your eyes. Raise your hands. Raise your fists. We will kneel. We will be awake when he comes. Thank you all, Derringers. And anyone who wants to go to Kids Church can go with Miss Courtney now. As we move now into our time of prayer, are there any um, prayer cards that need to make their way forward? You'll also have the opportunity during our time of prayer to lift up any prayer requests, either silently or out loud as you so feel led. Let us go to God in prayer. Holy God, we thank you for this day that you have given us and all that it holds. 
as we look at the high points, as we experience the low points, God, may we find you in every moment of this day. And may we celebrate our God who walks through life alongside us. We thank you for the joy of getting to spend time with family and friends this week as we celebrated Thanksgiving. We ask, Lord, that you would help us to be a people that don't lift up our Thanksgivings just once a year. God, that we might be a people who are constantly lifting up grateful hearts to our God. As we look on, as we see, as we name the blessings that are raining down upon us. And God, it is to you who does bless us immensely that we lift our prayers now. Thank you for a wonderful mission trip to Eagle Pass this last week. Thank you for the ways that you were at work through those who were able to go. The ways you were at work through the staff and volunteers down in Eagle Pass. Through the Border Patrol agents and through the migrants who all received meals and hopefully received just a little portion of your love along with it. We thank you for the community meal here where people had an opportunity to get together with friends that they might only see once a year, and yet friends whom they are as close to as some family members. God, you are at work in our world. Help us see that. Help us to lift up our joys to you. Now, Lord, receive the prayers that we lift up. With Ken Kenneth and Kay, we pray for Danny, who had a recurrence of cancer, for Skip, who had a stroke, and for Bob, who was recently hospitalized. We pray alongside Chris and Colleen for safety for all the college students who are driving back to school today. We pray with Ray uh, as we celebrated much this last week, help us to remember and reach out to the many facing starvation among us. And we celebrate, along with Susan, Perry's birthday today. We celebrate Dave's birthday as well as God today is apparently a day of birthdays for the praise band. And God, we lift up to you those prayers that are hard upon our hearts now as we speak them silently or out loud. God, hear our prayers. All of this we lift up in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, our God, and the one who taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who is in heaven. As our ushers come forward, um, just a quick reminder, uh, please remember to put your Welcome to Wimberley card and your pledge card if you have that uh, done, ready to go in the offering plate along with any gifts that you have this morning. And let us go to God in prayer. God, receive these gifts that we offer to you. May you bless them. May you multiply them. May you use them and use us to bring your kingdom to this place. This we pray in your name. Amen.
I'm reading from Isaiah, the, tenth, the 11th chapter, verses 1 through 10. A shoot will grow up from the stump of Jesse. A branch will sprout from its roots. The Lord's spirit will rest upon him, a spirit of wisdom and understanding, a spirit of planning and strength, a spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. He will delight in fearing the Lord. He won't judge by appearances, nor decide by hearsay. He will judge the needy with righteousness and decide with equity for those who suffer in his plan. He will strike the violent with the rod of his mouth. By the breath of his lips, he will kill the wicked. 
Righteousness will be the belt around his hips, and faithfulness the belt around his waist. The wolf will live with the lamb, and the, she- and the leopard will lie down with the young goat. The calf and the young lion will feed together, and the little child will lead them. The cow and the bear will graze. Their young will lie down together, and the lion will eat straw like an ox. A nursing child will play over the snake's hole. Toddlers will reach right over the serpent's head. They won't harm or destroy anywhere on the holy mountain. The earth will surely be filled with the knowledge of the Lord, just as the water covers the sea. On that day, Garuda Jesse will stand as a signal to the people. The nations will seek him out, and his dwelling will be great. Reading of the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 25, verses 1 through 13. Hear now these words of Christ for the disciples on that day and for us today. At that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten young bridesmaids who took their lamps and went out to meet the groom. Now five were wise, and the other five were foolish. The foolish ones took their lamps but didn't bring any oil for them. But the wise ones took their lamps and also brought containers of oil. When the groom was late in coming, they all became drowsy and went to sleep. But at midnight, there was a cry, Look, the groom, come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and prepared their lamps. But the foolish bridesmaids said to the wise ones, Give us some of your oil, because our lamps have gone out. But the wise bridesmaids replied, No, because if we share with you, there won't be enough for our lamps and yours. We have a better idea. You go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. But while they were gone to buy oil, the groom came. Those who were ready went with him into the wedding. Then the door was shut. Later, the other bridesmaids came and said, Lord, Lord, open the door for us. But he replied, I tell you the truth. I don't know you. Therefore, keep alert. For you do not know the day or the hour. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. God, speak to us your word for us today. Let it not be what I would have to say, but what you would have us hear. As we pray in your name, amen. One of my biggest fears in ministry is that I will end up a Pharisee. Not in uh, the the actual definition of Pharisee, because that's a, a pretty good thing. A teacher of the law, someone who knows the scripture so well that they are able to embody it and they are able to share the knowledge and the message of scripture with others. This is a very good thing to be. I wouldn't mind being that kind of Pharisee. The Pharisee that I don't want to ever become is the Pharisee that Jesus speaks of in Matthew 23, two chapters before the story that we have today. You see, Jesus has been teaching in the temple, and the Pharisees and legal experts keep coming and testing him. Finally, he gets tired of it and begins to turn to the crowd and rail against the Pharisees. He says, do not be like them. For though they know the law, they do not live by the law. He basically says that they've been doing what parents in throughout history have been doing when they tell their kids, do as I say, not as I do. The Pharisees teach well, so you should listen to what they say. But you should never follow their examples, for though they know the law, they do not live it out. Instead, they act selfishly. They take care of themselves to the detriment of the people of God. Jesus reserves special judgment for these teachers of the law. 
He rails against them in Matthew 23, and then storms out of the temple with his disciples at the beginning of Matthew chapter 24. And as they're leaving the temple, the disciples turn around and look at the grandeur of this building, this place of worship. And Jesus turns and says, you see that building? Not a stone will be left on top of another stone. It will all be destroyed. Well, the disciples are distressed and distraught. They don't know what to do with this, so they turn to Jesus and they say, when is this going to happen? How will we know this is about to happen? What are the signs that we can look for so that we can prepare for this? And Jesus begins to give what we call an apocalyptic monologue. It's a text about what will happen, all of the the horrible, awful things that will come before the Son of Humanity comes in glory. He says there will be wars, there will be false prophets, there will be pain, there will be suffering, there will be death. Woe to any pregnant or nursing mothers. Woe to all if it happens on the Sabbath day when no one is prepared for it. For the suffering and death to come will not be something that leaves any group or any person whole. Instead, it will affect all. Then he says, but God will shorten this time of suffering. Because after that will come the glory of the Lord, the time that everyone has been waiting earnestly for. Jesus says, things will get really, really bad, though. So be ready and prepare. That's basically all of Matthew 24. And then in Matthew 25, he tells the disciples, the crowds, how to prepare what to do so that you are ready when this apocalyptic time comes, what to do so that you are ready for when the glory of the Lord is coming upon the world. And he does so by giving three stories. The first is the one that we heard of the ten bridesmaids. The second is a parable about three servants whom the master gives different amounts of money to before he goes on a trip. The first two servants take their money and they double it by taking a little bit of a risk with it, by investing it well. And so when the master returns, they have not just that first amount of money, but a surplus to give to the master. The third servant, though, fearing what would happen if anything untoward happened to the money the master gave him, buried it in a hole. And so when the master comes back, says, I didn't do anything with it because I was afraid of what might happen, so here's your dirt-covered money. And the master is furious and says, you could have at least invested it and then, or put it in the bank and then I would have at least had the interest from it. But now all I've got is what I gave. And so he takes even that away from the servant and the servant is left without. That's the second story. The third story is one that we all know well and yet one that is so often so hard to interpret. It's the story of the sheep and the goats where Jesus says when the Son of Man sits on his throne in glory, he will divide the nations in judgment, separating them to his right and his left like the sheep and the goats. He will say to those on his right, well done, good and faithful servants. You have done everything that you were supposed to do. Welcome into glory. And they'll ask, when did we do these things that you said we were supposed to do? And he says, when you clothed me when I was naked. When you gave me food when I was hungry, when you gave me water when I was thirsty, when you visited me when I was sick or whenever I was in prison, whatever you did for the least of my children, you did for me. Then he turns to those on his left, to the goats, and he says, be gone from here. You who did not do what you were called to do. For when I was hungry, you gave me nothing. When I was thirsty, you gave me nothing. When I was naked, you left me unclothed. When I was sick and in prison, you did not visit me. Whatever you did not do for the least of my children, you did not do for me. These are the three stories that Jesus tells to tell us how we prepare for the coming kingdom of God. And honestly, if we take them by themselves, they're extremely hard to interpret completely. But if we hold them together, 
and we look at the three together, then a theme starts to arise. One that adds depth and complexity to each of them, but also clarity to what these stories tell us. Take today's text that we read about the ten bridesmaids. It's a story clearly about the necessity of preparation. And as my wife can attest, I am awful at preparation. And so I need to read this story over and over and hear that it's important to be prepared. We went on a trip to Eagle Pass this last week, and I didn't pack until about 30 minutes before we were supposed to leave. So guess who had to make a Walmart run because he forgot about half the things that he was supposed to bring? I drive Jessica nuts because I'm never prepared. I'm like these foolish bridesmaids who do not have what they need. I need to hear Jesus say, be like the wise bridesmaids. Fulfill your duty by being prepared. For it's clear that the wise bridesmaids win, right? They get to go into the party, while the foolish ones are left out in the dark. But here's my struggle with this story. Where's the grace in it? We believe, we celebrate, we worship a God of grace, of second chances, of redemption. Where is the grace given to these foolish bridesmaids from the other bridesmaids, from the groom, from anyone in this story? It's not there. In fact, if we take just this story by itself, that disconnect of grace causes a disconnect with the rest of the gospel as well. And we're left wondering, what is going on here? But if we don't take the story by itself, if we put it in the context of what Jesus has said and what Jesus will say through these two other stories, then we start to see just a little bit of something shift. And more understanding is available to us. This is still a story about preparation and the need of it, but also there's something a little bit more. You see, the very next story about the three servants is a story that focuses on risking abundance and using well the resources God has given us to multiply what we have available to us. And yet, no one in the story of the bridesmaids acts in abundance. The foolish bridesmaids don't have anything at all, so they are living into scarcity. But even the wise bridesmaids refuse to live into an abundance of sharing. They hoard what they have into a mindset of scarcity. Because of that, they tell the foolish ones at midnight to go find someone selling oil. They're much more like the third servant who puts his money in a hole, then they are like the two that risk in abundance. Then we have the story of the sheep and the goats, verses 31 through 46, that's a story about not withholding what we have from those who need it. And yet, because the five bridesmaids who were wise did not share, the five foolish bridesmaids went without. If the kingdom of God is for and about those who give freely to those who need, do the five wise bridesmaids make it into the kingdom of heaven? Or is going into the wedding their only reward while they miss out on an eternal one? parable is absolutely about preparation. But brothers and sisters, it's also about something a little bit more. You see, Jesus is trying to tell us that the kingdom of heaven is coming and we need to be ready, but we also need to ready the world around us. We have an abundance of resources that God has blessed us with. And we have the opportunity to use those resources to multiply the witness of the kingdom of God. 
to share what we have with those who are without. So that at the end of the day, whether we are wise or whether we are foolish, all make it into that great eternal wedding feast. We're called to ready the world around us to help others prepare as well. For only the Pharisees in Matthew's gospel prepare for only themselves. Only the Pharisees in Matthew's gospel selfishly hoard the message of God for themselves. We're not called to be that. We're called to be a disciple. A disciple who lives into a bigger vision. A disciple who prepares not just ourselves, but who works to prepare the world around us for the kingdom of God to break out around us as well. We're starting the season of Advent today. We have one candle lit on our wreath. We are in the season of preparation, preparing for the kingdom of God to break out around us. And we have a glimpse of what that kingdom will look like in what we heard from Isaiah earlier. A kingdom where there is no winner or loser. There is no hierarchy. A kingdom where the wolf lies down with the lamb. Where the cow and the lion graze together. Where the toddler, and this is the one that always just freaks me out. Where the toddler can play over the snake's den without fear. The kingdom of God is breaking out around us. And we have the opportunity to prepare for it and to prepare our world for it. So may we do so. May we boldly proclaim that we are ready for what God is doing. And may we ready the world around us. Amen. <clears throat> Jesus spoke often about how the kingdom of God is different than anything that we have known before, is different than anything that we can imagine. And the kingdom of God found, found a foothold in our world at the table of Christ place where Jesus came with his disciples, sat down with them, not just to break bread together, not just to share in the holy ritual of the Passover meal, but to start a new covenant between God and humanity, a new covenant that would bring salvation to all. And so as we come here to partake of this holy meal, may we remember that new covenant. May we remember that this is what we are preparing for. May we come ready to receive. Let's pray. Holy God, we thank you for all that you have done in our world, for all that you are doing. We thank you that your kingdom is breaking out around us and that we have the chance to prepare to be a part of it. As we come now to your table, let this be one of those moments where we find ourselves ready to receive of your grace, ready to receive again of all of the great things that you have done, that you're doing now that you will do in this world. May we hear again Jesus' words as he gathered with his, with his disciples, as he took the bread of the Passover, gave thanks for it, broke it, gave it to them, saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. As he took the cup, gave thanks for it, gave it to them, saying, drink of this, all of you, this is the blood of the new covenant, the cup of the new covenant, my blood poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Drink this as often as you do in remembrance of me. God, help us to remember what you have done. Help us to celebrate your great gift of grace. And help us to participate again in the kingdom of God unfolding around us. In your salvation made present, made available to all of us. All this we pray in your name. Amen. the body of Christ given for you.
And this is the blood of Christ poured out for you. As our servers come forward, we have uh, just a couple of reminders for you on how we will receive. First off, we'll have uh, two side serving aisles here. You'll come up as our ushers invite you from the back forward. You'll get a piece of bread. You'll dip it into the cup of grape juice and you'll take both elements together. We'll have a gluten-free station here in the middle for anyone who needs that. And just know that you are welcome here. For all are welcome at this table. This is not my table. This is not the church's table. This is the table of Jesus Christ. And Christ has made a place for you at his table. So wherever you are in your faith life, whether you are uh, one of those who was born in a pew or whether you have never been to church before, you are welcome to come and receive from this holy meal. So come, for all is ready.
Amen. As we check, up oh, there we go. All right. As uh, we prepare to leave from this place, we just have a couple of announcements to lift up. So I'm going to ask Nelda to come up to make her announcement, and while she's coming up. I'll just direct your attention to this middle announcement on our page about adopting a Bright Beginnings preschool teacher. Uh, We are going to start trying to love on the teachers of our preschool here at uh, the church. So if you would like more information about what that would look like or if you would like to participate in this, please talk to Alicia. Her uh, information is in the bulletin. And this is a wonderful way that we can, um, through just small acts of kindness, show love and support for those who are Monday through Friday here with kids showing them the love of God. So please consider doing that and talk to Alicia about it if you have any more questions. Nelda? Good morning. I've been thinking about this for several weeks, and I decided that we should get together and give our church a Christmas gift. That being the sound and audio system that we need so badly. Whenever they have to buy uh, bulbs for the projector back there, it's over $400. And so I kind of feel that's just being thrown. Oh. My sister and I always like to travel in to Arkansas in the fall because of the beautiful leaves. And since I had a shop, I enjoyed going in shops just to see if I could get ideas for my own. And there was a t-shirt saying, after 40, patch, patch, patch. And uh, our sentiment's not 40 years old, but that's what we're doing right now, is patching. So in the foyer, uh, Robin is out there, and I'll be out there, can explain more. But (laughs) we have printed off notes, and some of them uh, have uh, prices already in them. Some are blank, so if you don't agree with the prices we've run off, you can uh, fill in your own, and when you make your check out, be sure it's to the church, but in the bottom, put sound system. And uh, hopefully we can raise the money that we need to replace and just get a new one that's going to last us for a while. There was a man that had an uncle that owned a little grocery store. And a lot of the people really needed help. And so he would write out his tickets and he'd just throw the receipt in a box and it was stacking up. And he told his uncle, you would do better if you took cash or credit cards. And he turned to him and said, I am storing up treasures in heaven and not on earth. So pray about your decision. God bless you in the decision that you decide to make and help us complete this. Thank you. Thank you, Nelda. With these announcements being made, let us stand and sing our final song together.
hear this benediction. Go from this place as a people prepared, prepared for the coming kingdom, prepared for the glory of God, prepared not just yourself, but prepared to prepare the world as well. Go from this place ready for what God is doing around us, and go from this place ready to ready the world as well. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace.